Two weeks ago, the FCC released a statement announcing that, as expected, DJI and Autel had been added to the covered list, which means that existing equipment is still fine to use, but no new equipment would be able to get FCC certification and therefore could not be imported. But that announcement contained a few extra pieces of information that surprised and concerned, well, pretty much everybody who read it. In addition to banning DJI and Autel specifically, it also expanded the covered list to include all UAS and UAS critical components produced abroad. So any foreign made drone, any foreign made drone component. And they went on to say that drone components included flight controllers, uh, control systems like receivers and handheld transmitters, batteries, motors, things that were not traditionally regulated by the FCC, all would no longer be able to be imported, at least according to a literal reading of the announcement, which led many people, including myself, to say a literal reading of this announcement can't possibly be true and it also can't be legal. Well, it seems like the FCC, I'm not going to say they agree, but it seems like the FCC has walked back at least some of this. Let's take a look. Today, the FCC released a fact sheet announcing that it had updated the cover list to exempt certain drones from restrictions and answering some other questions that people were asking. Now, I've got a link to this document in the video description below. It is not a very long document. It's about three pages, and I encourage you to download and read the whole thing yourself. But I want to focus on a couple aspects of this that I think are significant, some aspects that I think may be misinterpreted, and just give you my perspective on it. The first exemption is any type of UAS or UAS critical component that is on the blue UAS cleared list. Now, this is not going to do much for hobbyists because drones on the blue UAS list are drones that are basically manufactured inside the United States and are sold mostly to the government, military federal government, etc. Hobbyists don't buy off the blue list because the blue UAS drones are not really tailored to us and they're also more expensive generally than hobby parts that we could buy ourselves. So basically all this does is say this stuff was already made in the United States so we'll just assume that if you're on the blue UAS list you're good to go. The other exemption is UAS critical components that qualify as domestic end products under the Buy American Standard. This is another way that they have codified the extremely vague and overreaching language in the original announcement by sort of substituting in an actual sort of legally defined standard. So what is a domestic end product under the Buy American Supplies Act? Here's the definition. Let's take a look. Domestic end product means an end product manufactured in the United States if the cost of its components, blah, 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 exceeds 60% of the cost of all of its components. Aha! So now, instead of just a blanket foreign ban, have we substituted that with a definition that says as long as 60% of it is manufactured in the United States, 40% can be manufactured outside of the United States uh, and you can still use it. The other distinction that I think is important is that components of foreign origin of the same class or kind as those that the agency determines are not mined, produced, or manufactured in sufficient and reasonably available quantities or sufficiently quality are treated as domestic. And the reason this is significant is that there are lots and lots of FPV components that are simply not available in sufficient quantity from domestic manufacturing. And it seems like this is the loophole, not, not the loophole for hobbyists. Hobbyists are just gonna order from AliExpress or wherever they wanna order from, and it'll get through customs and hobbyists will be fine. It might be a little bit annoying to not be able to get things as quickly as if you bought them domestically. But the loophole here that I think is significant is that stores, retailers, who want to import products and sell them to us may be able to use this loophole in some way to argue, well, these products are not available in sufficient quantity domestically, and therefore we can use this to import them, maybe? Seems like to me, like this is one of the biggest uh, and most meaningful loopholes in the new definition that could be used to keep the FPV hobby in the United States going in as much as it was threatened by this uh, decision. How would the ban impact devices that could serve as UAS components, but also have other uses? For example, a camera. A camera could go on a drone. It might not go on a drone. I don't know. 
I could use a camera as a backup camera or a security camera. That's what FPV drone cameras originally were. Here is another critical loophole that can be used by U.S. retailers to get these products in and sell them to you. The FCC understands that UAS critical components means components designed and intended primarily for use in a UAS. For example, a camera with many potential functions and uses could theoretically be attached to a drone is not a UAS critical component and so can receive FCC equipment authorization. But a camera designed and intended primarily to be a drone camera is a UAS critical component. Now, this is a matter of degree, a matter of nuance because obviously like a, a, a run cam night eagle camera is intended to go on a drone in every real sense of the word, but then when it comes down to talking to the FCC, could you argue that, well, it could go on anything? I think this is clearly relevant when we're talking about like the camera module for a specific drone that only works on a, like a DJI Mavic or something. Well, DJI is still banned, so it doesn't matter. But if you have a specific component that only works on a, a specific drone, clearly that would not fall under this exemption. But things like cameras, motors, heck, even a flight controller. Could, is a flight controller made for a drone or is it just a general purpose computer that just happens to output signals to ESCs? And could it be a drone or could it be something else? It depends on how far you're willing to push that. But that seems like this determination also opens the door for a lot of components to come in under this dual use uh, loophole. The FCC doesn't even regulate batteries and motors. So how can they ban the import of them? The FCC's answer is kind of cagey. No device now requires FCC equipment authorization that did not already require it. In other words, they are not trying to expand their authority to regulate things like motors and batteries that they did not traditionally regulate. And then they just sort of go on to say, all entities seeking a waiver will be required to establish an onshoring plan for the manufacturing of all UAS critical components, including components that do not require FCC authorization. So what they seem to be saying is, if you have a foreign-made UAS or UAS component, and you want to apply for a waiver to bring it into the United States, you must show us a plan that you will be working on onshoring the manufacturing in the future. And as part of that, you will need to onshore all parts of the manufacturing, even though the only some parts of the drone are actually subject to FCC certification. When this first happened, I said that Practically speaking, it was unlikely to affect hobbyists' ability to get the parts that we use to build and buy drones. And it's going to affect the DJI and Autel of the world. And by the way, DJI and Autel still banned. But it was unlikely to prevent hobbyists from getting the parts that they need. Um, I said that it would take time to see whether that turned out to actually be true. And we just wouldn't know. But my guess was that, look... Lots of the stuff that we use should have an FCC certification and doesn't, and it, we have no trouble importing it. So the FCC saying, hey, if you don't have FCC certification, we're not going to let you import this stuff. Hey, huh, we're already breaking those rules. Oh, you made another rule. You're, you're not enforcing the rules that you already have. This seems to open up more loopholes, not for individual hobbyists, because realistically speaking, individual hobbyists are unlikely to get in trouble with the FCC. It's going to be the stores that import the stuff, the stores that sell the stuff that are getting in trouble, and then hobbyists are going to be unable to get the stuff that they need because they buy from those stores, or it's going to be more of a hassle. Uh, I, I, it's a terrible way to do business. It's a terrible way to run regulations. If anybody had asked before this went out, what the effect would be, they would have heard all these problems and this memo, these exemptions could have been built in from day one. That's not how this government seems to operate. They seem to make wide ranging proclamations. And then when people freak out, sometimes, not always, they rewind and back up, not quite to where they should have gone in the first place. Like you don't do it right, whatever right means. You go five steps in a random direction, take three steps back, Everybody's like, whew, oh, could have been a lot worse. Never mind that we already took two steps in the wrong direction. Eh, well, but I'm not here to be a political pundit, am I? I'm just here to read, read, and, and analyze. Let me know what you think down in the comments.